Hello, hello, and welcome back to the channel. As most of you know, I'm Topher. And for those of you who don't know and just randomly decided to click on my video, welcome to the channel. I'm Topher. Thank you for stopping by. So we're here to do a reaction, and we're diving back into I Promised You the Moon. It's been a little while since I've reacted to this, and I've had some people in the comments section like, hey, don't forget about this series. And I apologize that it's taken me so long to get back to this. Just last month was a, a fun thing, and just things, things, and things, things. So we're getting back into this, and it's not like one of the other series that I've reacted to where it's literally only been like two days since I posted the video and people are like, oh my god, when are you going to post the next episode? Please don't make us wait too long. And I'm like, child, it's it's literally been two days since this episode that you're commenting on right now that I uploaded, but okay. No, this is, it's literally been almost a month since I've reacted to this. So we're going to dive back into this. Um, we're going to dive into episode three. At the end of episode two, we had that beautiful scene on the rooftop between Tet and O. And yeah, it was just really, really, really beautiful. We, we used our words like adults. We got our feelings out. We didn't keep things bottled up. So people have to be mind readers to see what's going on. So now we're just going to dive into episode three and just see where this takes us. He look good with glasses. Just what I was thinking in my head. Don't. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. Okay, I guess that's as good a place as any to end this half of the episode. Um, yes, I was literally just having these thoughts in my head. Well, I was thinking it earlier throughout the episode that there may be some sort of potential love connection with him, maybe. Just because like, I feel like when I reacted to the preview of this series however many months ago, like those were the vibes I was getting. And I've mentioned it a couple times in the reactions that I've done, but those are the vibes that I was getting that I feel like I vividly remember screaming out something along the lines of, we work so hard to get them together, don't you start breaking them up or something like that. Um, when I reacted to that trailer and it's like, I had the impression that they were going to start growing apart and growing their separate ways and growing towards other people. Um, and that may not be the case. That may be the case, but it may not be the case. I don't know. People grow apart. That's a normal part of life. It doesn't happen to everybody, but you know, it, it certainly happens. Sometimes people are meant to be together for forever, and sometimes people aren't. Sometimes people grow apart, they change, they become different people. It doesn't mean that either one of them did anything bad it just means that they grew into the people they were meant to be and the people they were meant to be weren't meant to be together and you know that that's that's life um so all throughout this episode i've been seeing like these sort of like moments between um tet and jai and thinking like just getting those kind of vibes getting those kind of feelings especially in like the last 20 minutes or so well I've only been watching for 30 minutes so maybe like the last 15 minutes or so I've been getting those kind of vibes and then when I saw Jai with Miss May in the you know the room all cozied up whatever I'm like okay cool maybe it's not the case Jai might just be just just his friend obviously he's got interests in Miss May so maybe he's a heterosexual or maybe he's bisexual or gender or fluid I don't I don't everybody in my head everybody's gay so i don't know but you know he's got his thing over here with miss may so i'm like okay that's fine but as soon as he whipped out the camera and he started taking pictures the way he was so focused in on these pictures it made it reminded me of somebody who was taking pictures of someone that they love like i've been re reacting to until we meet again another thai series and i think it was episode five when the two characters went on like the first date at the aquarium and you could see the way Dean was taking pictures of Parm while Parm was just in awe of all the fish and Dean was just taking you know candid pictures of him and you know it's things that you do when you really really like someone you really really 
you want those candid pictures where they're not paying attention, they're not posing, it's you're just capturing their real essence and it's just like, oh my god, let me get as many of these. And it's, it was just one of those kind of moments I was getting here with Te, like when he was taking the pictures of him on stage, the way he was looking at the camera, it wasn't like, it didn't seem just like, okay, my friend is on stage, let me take pictures. Yeah, girl, I said, I'll text you these, you know, pictures, you can put them on Facebook later. It didn't seem like that kind of vibe, just the way he was looking at the camera was giving me those kind of vibes that, mm, maybe something else, even if it's just subconscious, something else is burrowing underneath the surface, for Te, at least. I don't know that Jai has these feelings, but for Te, something's going on. And, you know, we, we know from his diary that he feels like he and oh are kind of growing apart which again i said it's normal it happens do we necessarily want to see it happen for our main ship no because i love these boys i love these characters i love them together but it it happens people are, not everyone is meant to be together forever they say you meet people for a uh, a reason a season or a lifetime some people sometimes you know maybe maybe 10 and o are for he met they met each other for a reason they i don't think they've met each other for a season i don't think it's just like a short-lived whatever because i feel like if it's a season it's been a long ass season it's been like a 20 something year season for them so i don't think it's a season for them but i feel like they met each other and they're in each other's lives for a reason that reason may have been to you know yes embark on that journey of self-discovery for, for one another learn that okay yes i do have these feelings i might be gay or whatever it may be um learn about love and learn about themselves and explore life together but the reason they may not be together for a lifetime it may be that their reason is just to help each other grow and then they'll grow apart into the people that they're meant to be so that might be the case of what's happening here um and yeah i won't be I'm not going to say I'm going to be happy if they break up, but I won't be upset if them breaking up leads them, is, if them breaking up is a result of them following their own personal paths and leading them to the people that they're supposed to be. Then, you know, that's, that's fine. That's fine. That's fine. Um, but yeah, let's see, what else did we learn in this half? Um, yeah, they're growing apart. O's finally got his red hair, which I love, I live for. Um, O's friend group, two of them are dating now, which again, they're adorable, so I'm happy for them. Um, and then the whole um, acting exercise between Te and Dream, I believe her name was. Um, like y'all, I've mentioned it a number of times throughout, I don't know if it was just this series, but I feel like I've mentioned it through other series I've reacted to. Like y'all know, I'm a performer and all that kind of stuff, and I've mentioned that I do not like acting as an exercise, personally. Um, I love watching people who do it. I love watching people who love it and whatnot, and there's some people who absolutely love it. They love diving into characters, and they love all that kind of stuff. Me, I don't like it. I don't like, it's, I like singing, I like dancing, and acting is just kind of a thing that comes along with the territory. I can do it but I don't necessarily like it because it feels terribly invasive for me. It's a very invasive process when you want to do it, like when you want to hardcore do it and do it right and give yourself the full commitment to the character, it is a very invasive process and, and I am a very closed off person and I don't like having, I don't like sharing that part of myself all the time. I don't like being invaded. So like that whole acting exercise with between Ten Dream super like emotionally invasive because like and I was very much te in that situation where it's like you know they're like okay ask if you can do whatever and go ahead and she's like oh can I put my hand on your shoulder and he's like yeah and then the teacher's like hey don't just respond like think about this don't just go through the motions and just do what you think whatever you think about it are you actually okay and then respond and then you know she's like okay can I put my hand on your neck or whatever and he's, and he's like yeah he's like again think about it and then he's like you know think about the first time you 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 know you had sex with you know your partner think about blah 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 and te is you know going through all of these emotions and then he said you know he couldn't remember the first time or whatever but he was getting all these flashes and whatnot but still like just that whole process of building that chemistry with other people getting getting to know the character 
deep diving into your own psyche to try and pull out something that you can relate to this character you're playing and whatnot. It's just a very invasive process that I do not personally like. I don't like being involved in that process. So I respect anybody who has that ability and who has the ability to go into that process, who enjoys going through the process, to make that commitment to their craft. You, you got all my respect in the world. So that whole process there, it, it made me feel uncomfortable at times. My heart was racing at times. I was feeling all kinds of things because like I said, it feels very invasive and I don't like having my personalness invaded like that. Um, but yeah, all in all, it was a very good half of the first, or first half of the episode. Um, and I'm guessing, like I said at the beginning, every episode is a year in college maybe i don't remember it's been a while since i watched the second episode so i don't remember if that took place in like sophomore year or, you know second year but first episode obviously was when they arrived at college freshmen and now this was their junior we're in their junior year um so maybe that's the case maybe it's not but let's dive into the second half of this episode and just see where things go so we, we just gonna act like this was an acting exercise Child? I mean, he's a good actor, but he ain't that damn good. Girl, that, that, mm. Oh, I got feelings. Oh, I got feelings because... <sighs> Y'all? I got such mixed feelings. Like I said in my first little breakthrough there in the during the intermission between part one and part two. Like I can I could feel them trying to set something up between Ted and Jai. Like I could feel it. I could feel it in my bones. I could feel it in my loins. My loins have been set ablaze by that last scene. And like I could feel it. And like I'm I'm not a advocate for, you know, infidelity, not in any way, shape, or form. Y'all, y'all know this. I'm a big advocate for fidelity. I'm a big advocate for consent, which clearly they're practicing consent here, so at least that's a good thing. But I'm a big advocate for consent, fidelity, and like whatnot. So I don't necessarily approve of people being unfaithful to one another. But also, there's that part of me that already gave the speech early in the first, you know, first breakdown where Tet and O, the way that they seem to be writing things, are kind of growing apart in a sense. Now, with that one little, you know, lovely sex scene that we had there, it seemed like, okay, well, they came together. Word choice. Um, <laughs> but instead of growing apart, they were coming back together and, you know, they had a nice, beautiful moment, they had a nice, you know, morning after, that morning after glow and it was you know it was beautiful it's like okay we're kind of back to the old way he just needed that pep talk from you know someone else to kind of get his head back into the mind space but i also kind of felt during that moment that he was just doing it for the sake of this play for the sake of he was taking jai's advice and trying to recreate that moment so that he could be a better actor in the play partially to impress Jai and and that from that standpoint I'm like oh man I I don't want to see I don't want to see anyone get hurt we know this I don't like seeing people get hurt so I don't want to see O get hurt I don't want to see him be used as a tool for Tez acting you know class or something like that like I don't want I don't want to see it I don't want to see us go down that road but there have been clear signs from the beginning of this series of them, you know, kind of growing apart in this sense, growing into their own person, into their own people, and those people that they're growing into may or may not be compatible with one another. They may not be the people that they started out in this relationship. And like I said, it's okay for people to grow apart. It's okay for them to find other people that you know 
their heart desires or that meet their interests of the new people that they're going into. But there's a way to go about it. And that's where I'm torn. That's where I'm torn. I'm not torn with the idea of Te moving on or having an attraction to Jai. I have no issues with that. My issue is with the approach that we're taking. And because like, I'm of the mindset like, okay, don't cheat. If you are attracted to somebody else, fine. End it with whoever you're with and then go explore whatever you need to explore with this new person. Or forget about this new person and just keep with the person you're with. Like there's no need for people to cheat or be unfaithful. Like it's a very easy decision as far as I'm concerned. Either end it here and then go to your greener pastures or forget about your greener pastures and stay at home and you know, whatever. Like, so that's where I am here. But also I don't want Ted to just break up with O just because he's got some sort of like man crush on Jai. Cause it could just be a temporary thing that he's feeling right here. It may not be a long-term thing. It may just be a past. I get man crushes all the damn time. Like hell y'all watch my reactions. Every time some delicious shirtless man comes up on my screen, I'm like, woo, yes, praise Jesus. That's another one of my husbands added to my list. Like, you know, I get man crushes all the time. So I get that. So I don't want Ted to just break up with O because he's got some man crush that may not be anything serious in the long run. It may just be a, you know, passing fancy and, you know, get over it in a couple days. But at the same time, like, I don't want him to pursue something with Jai while Te is still in the picture without, like, it's one thing if Te, he and Te had, or he and O had this conversation and they're like, okay, sure, go explore, or, you know, we have an open relationship, or, you know, whatever it is. Different relationships have different rules and whatnot, so I can't oppose one set of rules on every single relationship. So if they were of the mindset and they had the understanding and the agreement, like, yes, you go out there and do you, you go out there and do you, and we'll still come home together and, you know, be together and you, I still love you, whatever, cool, that's fine, that's one thing. Kind of like in Dark Blue and Moonlight between, you know, Yanfei and Jimmy. It's like that that was seemed to be the dynamic that they had there. And okay, that worked for them. No judgments. Um, but it's when you don't have that sort of understanding and then you start stepping out of the relationship that I'm like, ah. So that's that's where my issue is. Like there's the half of me that wants to see. Um, Te and O succeed and, you know, move forward. And there's that half of me that wants to see Te explore this thing with, um, Jai. And hopefully O, you know, has something. Because I know there was one guy in the friend group, I can't remember the name right now because it's been forever since I've watched the first two episodes. Uh, but there was one guy in the friend group um, who was kind of like the proponent of bringing O into the friend group, who I was also getting sort of romantic-ish feelings from between he and O um, early on. That I'm like, okay, I could see them being a thing together too, fine. Because um, like O was saying when he was talking to his friends, he's like, ever since I quit acting, it's like, I don't know that we have anything to talk about anymore. Like it seemed like the basis of the relationship was just the fact that they were both going to school for acting. And throughout, you know, I told Sunset about you, that was, a large part of their relationship the fact that they were both trying to get into acting school they were trying to get into university for acting and they had this rivalry and there was all this stuff but it was all centered around you know this acting thing that they were trying to do so now that they're in university and they're both going for acting everything result revolved around acting classes auditions this that and the other and now that he's no longer doing the acting thing it's like mm, what do we talk about i don't know because our entire relationship was kind of based on this one little thing and it's like mm, 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 mm. so it's it's a very sticky 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 web and I don't I'm just torn about how to feel but I mean the kisses were the kisses were nice I'm not mad about the kisses I'm not mad about the interaction I feel like everything that they did to set up the sort of romantic interaction between Jai and Te was very well done, very well executed. Um, it wasn't like in your face, but at the same time, it was not so subtle that it just came out of left field. I'm like, oh, where the hell did this come from? Like it was very well done, very well set up, acting fantastic as always is. The music, the scoring in the background, live the that scene with them when they snuck into, I guess, the museum or whatever it was. The 
boardwalk and then they had like the bridge behind them with all the lights and the nighttime oh gorgeous 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 and yeah like i don't know i don't know the trajectory that um ted and o's relationship is going to take right now but i guess we will just have to wait and see have to wait and see where things go but yeah, those are my general thoughts, just torn and confused, but I hope you guys enjoyed this reaction. I'm sorry it took me so long to get to this episode. I promise me getting to the next couple episodes will not take, it won't take me a month, I promise. But I hope you guys enjoyed this reaction. If you did, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, share, turn on notifications so you'll be notified when all my shenanigans get posted. If there's anything else you'd like me to react to, be sure to leave it down in the comments on Twitter as soon as I possibly can. If you'd like to support the channel in other ways, you're more than welcome to join us over on Patreon. You don't have to, but you're more than welcome to if you want to. And I'll see you guys in my next video. Love you. Mwah. And before you guys go, a shout out to my amazing patrons. I can't begin to express how thankful I am for your support. And if you guys would like to join us over on Patreon, the link is down in the description. I love you guys.